Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to Week 14, Lesson 3. We are still studying the Doppler effect. In this lesson, we're going to join the Mindset team as they teach us about the applications of the Doppler effect. In other words, what use is the Doppler effect to us? Hello Grade 12s, today's lesson on the Doppler effect will look at the application of the Doppler effect in real life situations. We will look at applications of the Doppler effect with the focus on ultrasound and Doppler radar. Doctors can use Doppler ultrasound to measure the heart rate of a fetus in the womb or the rate of blood flow in a vein. In Doppler ultrasound, the blood is the source of the reflected sound. The blood is moving, and so the ultrasound has a different frequency when it is received than when it is transmitted. Note that Doppler ultrasound is not the same as a normal ultrasound scan that produces a reflected image of a baby in the womb. Let's watch a video that shows us how Doppler ultrasound works. The first application that we will look at is a medical application. The Doppler effect is used to measure the rate at which blood flows through a person's veins. This knowledge can help to prevent fatal heart attacks and strokes. We use ultrasound waves that have a frequency of about 5 MHz. Ultrasound waves are sound waves that are too high for our ears to hear. A transmitter sends out these ultrasound waves which are aimed at the blood in the veins. The waves pass through the walls of the veins but are reflected by the blood cells. The ultrasound waves striking the blood cells have the same frequency as the transmitter. However, the blood cells are moving, so they act as a moving source for the reflected ultrasound waves. The reflected waves are picked up by a receiver and the difference between the transmitted sound and the reflected sound is analyzed to provide information about the velocity of the blood cells. Would you like to have a go at applying your scientific knowledge to medicine? How do you think the frequency of the received wave will differ from the frequency of the wave that is reflected from the blood cell if the blood is flowing away from the receiver? Well, we first need to work out our frame of reference. This diagram shows us the observer, in this case, the receiver, and the source, the moving blood cells. We will just focus on the horizontal components. Remember, the positive direction is taken to be the line from the observer to the source. So in our diagram, the positive direction is towards the right. Now, let's write down our given information. Since the receiver is not moving, we know that the observer velocity is 0 meters per second. The blood cell is the source of the wave and it is moving away from the observer, so its direction is positive. If we substitute the value of VO equal to 0 into our Doppler equation, then the denominator of the fraction is larger than the numerator. So we will be multiplying the source frequency by a number that is less than 1. Remember the frequency of the source, the moving blood cell, is the same as the transmitter, which we know. This tells us that the observed frequency will be lower than the frequency of the sound waves at the source. The receiver used to pick up the reflected ultrasound can be tuned in to the lower frequency very accurately and can measure it. So using this ultrasound apparatus, we know both frequencies FO and FS. The speed of the ultrasound in blood is also known. This means that the only unknown value in the equation is Vs the speed of the blood cell. 
by substituting in our known values, we can easily find the speed. The Doppler effect is used in a similar way to measure the heartbeat of unborn babies that are about two months old. From what we have seen from the video, the ultrasound uses the Doppler effect principle. Ultrasound waves from the transmitter are reflected back from red blood cells that are in motion. The blood cells are the source. The reflected waves are received by the receiver, the listener. The red blood cells flow away from the source and so the frequency of the reflected waves is less than the frequency that was transmitted. The computer, the receiver, registers the reflected sound waves at the lower frequency. Thereafter, the computer calculates the speed of the red blood cells. Let's recap this. The transmitter is not moving. The blood cells act as the moving source. We measure the frequency of the ultrasound reflected back to the receiver. What then needs to be calculated is the speed of the blood cells. So let's do an actual calculation. Ultrasonic waves transmitted by the device have a frequency of 2,250 times 10 to the 5 Hertz. The frequency of ultrasound observed is 2,249 times 10 to the 5 Hertz. If the speed of sound through tissue is 1,440 meters per second, calculate the speed of blood in the vein. Write the main Doppler effect equation. The velocity of the transmitter or listener VL is zero. We substitute in the other values. Remember the blood is the source and the frequency at the source is the same as the frequency transmitted. Simplify and make the denominator the subject of the formula. That is 1440 plus velocity of the source. We find the speed of the blood to be 0 0.64 meters per second. There are a number of other applications of the Doppler effect in our lives. Such applications can be found in sports as well as in traffic law enforcement. Nowadays, we use lasers instead of sound waves, but the Doppler principle is the same. Similarly, we can measure the speed of a receding star in astronomy. Let's observe a video that shows us how the radar gun operates in sport. The second real-life application of the Doppler effect that we will look at in this lesson is in the area of sport. Have you ever wondered how the television studio can tell us the speed of a cricket ball as it leaves a bowler's hand? Or have you wondered how the speed of a tennis serve is measured? In both of these examples, a device called a radar gun is used. This device sends out a signal in the form of a radio wave. The radio signal is aimed at the moving ball and is reflected by the ball back to a receiver. The difference in the frequency of the sent beam and the received beam is analyzed using the Doppler effect equation to give information about the speed of the ball. An important thing to note about using a radar gun is that it needs to be lined up with the movement of the target that it is measuring. When the angle of the radar gun with the target's velocity direction is wide, the measurement of the target's velocity will be less accurate than when the angle is smaller. So radar guns need to be handled correctly to give an accurate velocity reading. The same principle of the radar gun used in sports is used on motor vehicles on the road. The radar gun receives the reflected beam from the vehicle. The vehicle serves as the source. We cross to a traffic enforcement officer to hear about this. I'm Ronald Wright from uh, Sintel and um, basically Sintel does the, uh, we're a supplier of road safety and traffic management uh, and revenue collection services for the local governments in South Africa. Could you tell us what are the historic practices in speed trapping? 
uh, years ago we used to do uh, speed trapping by means of stopwatches and uh, not linked to any photographic ev evidence. That's a prime difference between previous technologies and the technologies of today. Today we use um, mainly two methods, um, laser technology and radar technology. Uh, popular, popular belief within the community is that we're using main, uh, mainly radar because in newspaper reports you always talk about radar technology. And in fact, it's laser technology which is pr predominantly used in, in this country. Probably about 95% of all speed measurement is done with laser technology in this country today. And what are the accuracy and validity of current methods? The, the measurement must be accurate to be able to be used for enforcement purposes. You must be uh, within two kilometers, uh, below 100 kilometers an hour, and above 100 kilometers an hour, you must be more, less than 2% uh, uh, within that, with that accuracy range. So if you're traveling at 200 kilometers an hour, you must be within four kilometers of the true speed of the vehicle. The reflection of the laser beam needs to have a very flat surface on which to reflect and normally they would aim that laser beam at your number plates. You can aim it on any flat area of the, the re within the area of the number plate. Legally that's, that's what we have to comply with. So the guy w uh, aiming the laser gun has to be very accurate on a moving vehicle traveling up to 200, 220 kilometers an hour so it takes quite a bit of practice to do that. Radar technology is um, a system where they would beam an electromagnetic uh, radar uh, beam towards uh, your vehicle. In the, pre in the past they used to use long distance high powered radar. Uh, in the later technology they would use a slant radar which is a beam aimed slightly at a, an angle of 20 degrees across the, the road. And this would be a low powered radar uh, in the later technology. In the past, the high power technology was more prone to um, reflections of other vehicles within its path, and quite often these cases never stood up in court. So they decided to go for a radar, light, uh, a slant radar, which is a low powered radar beam. Um, this is more effective because uh, in the past people used to use radar detectors and you could detect uh, a radar speed measuring device a few kilometers uh, ahead of the, of the uh, speed trap. So with this new technology you can't detect the radar until you're right within the beam. What is the impact of modern equipment such as radar detectors and jammers which drivers might have to avert law enforcement? Okay. Uh, Technology today um, provides, a lot of people are actually using um, laser jammers. Uh, we normally find this in sports cars and, and the upper range or the price brackets of, of motor vehicles where people can afford to put these jammers in. They roughly cost about 5,000 Rand uh, to, in, to install a laser jammer in, into your motor vehicle. Uh, what we have developed is, is a system where we use a combination of laser and radar technology to, to catch offenders uh, speeding and to prosecute them for using jammers. Um, so we then take those two evidence the guy the guy being uh, speeding on the on the radar camera we will get his reading on the speed on the radar camera and in the case of the laser camera uh, certain laser cameras are equipped to recognize when that pulse has been jammed or blocked and we will then in any case whether the guy regardless whether the guy is speeding or not we will then take a photograph and it will indicate on the photograph that the signal has been jammed and no accurate speed reading could be taken. So it's basically a self-test within the camera as well uh, so that you can't prosecute somebody for when the signal has been scrambled. Usually uh, in the case of certain cameras we will get a, a reading of 65,000 kilometers an hour which we know is, is, is a false reading but uh, we will then prosecute based on the on having a jammer in their vehicle. But this, this will be done in special operations. In summary, the Doppler effect, be it in medicine, sports or even traffic law enforcement, is used to measure the velocity of an object. 
In all these situations, the ultrasound and the radar gun serves as the listener that receives the reflected sound and the listener is stationary. Very well then, thank you for joining us and it is time for you to do the task found on www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.